Good morning, class. Hi, I'm Keith Moore, and this is Faith School. Faith School is the place where my spirit is fed. My faith grows stronger, and I learn how to be an overcomer. And we are, and you are, learning how to be an overcomer. Instead of being overcome, instead of being a victim of overcoming and being victorious, and no matter what you've been dealing with, there is a way out, there is a way through, there is a way over, and Jesus is the way, His Spirit is the way, His Word is the way, faith in Him is the victory that overcomes the world. Get your Bible, get something to make a note with, come on into the class with us, put everything else on hold, and let's release faith to hear from Him and get specific answers for right now. Father, in Jesus' name, all of us agree together is touching this, asking you to enlighten us, reveal to us, remind us, show us what you know is the most important things for us to see and know and do right now. And we say, get glory to yourself in our lives, in every part, in every way. Let it be seen and shown that you are good and you are real and and you are here with us. We thank you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Would you look please again in the, um, the eighth chapter of Luke. We're studying the healing of Jairus' daughter. And this is recorded in Matthew 9 and in Mark 5 and in Luke 8. And um, we want to read this again and see what we should learn from this healing that so amazingly happened. Uh, these are specifically recorded for all generations. And so believe that you'll get answers from it right now as we read. Luke 8, 41, the scripture said that there came a man named Jairus. He was a ruler of the synagogue and he fell down at Jesus' feet and besought him that he would come into his house. For he had one only daughter about 12 years of age and she lay a dying but as the people, as he went, the people thronged him. If you skip down to verse 49, it says, While he yet spoke, there comes one from the ruler of the synagogue's house saying to him, Your daughter is dead, trouble not the master. But when Jesus heard it, he answered him saying, Fear not, believe only, and she shall be made whole. Now these three elements apply to every situation that you, wherein you're attacked. What's number one? Don't be afraid. Do not pass by that too quickly. Fear allows the enemy to work. Just like the Spirit of God is prompting and moving us to faith, wrong spirits will try to move us to fear. Why? To, and specifically to yield to fear, that is to talk fear words and to act in fear. That gives the enemy a spiritual legal right to manifest destruction, stealing, killing, and destroying. To act on a fear and to speak fear words is to allow the enemy access. You don't want to do that. And also... I heard Brother Kenneth Copeland say this some years ago. He said, uh, if you allow fear, uh, accommodate it, then it will contaminate faith. And so you, you, we, we must not allow fear because uh, halting between two uh, opinions and, and two positions doesn't work. James talked about if you vacillate, you're unstable, you won't receive. Don't, don't to think that you will receive. So number one was what? Don't. Don't fear. Number two, what? Believe and, and do that only, exclusively, 
Believe, believe what? What he said. And then the third element here is what he said. Believe what? Believe what he said. He said, believe only and she shall be made whole. She shall. There's a word from the Lord for every situation. You remember when David and his uh, men had lost everything, their hometown was burnt to the ground and their, their spouses, their children, everything, all their possessions had been taken away and they're just standing there looking at, uh, at smoke and ashes where their home and their family used to be. Uh, and their hearts were just torn and, and most of the men, uh, these are, these are uh, warriors, they're just crying their eyes out and even mad at David because they're off with him on campaign when this happened. And um, the Bible said, David encouraged himself in the Lord in the midst of that. So it's possible when everybody else is crying their eyes out for you to look a different direction, isn't it? And he inquired of the Lord and said, Lord, should we try to go find them? Should we try to get things back? The Lord said, go. You will recover all. Oh, come on, do you hear that? Is that a word from the Lord? Yes. How does faith come? That's how and when faith comes. It comes with the word. It's a package. Come on, can you see that? It's a package thing. When the word from the Lord comes, there's faith there on it and in it and with it if you choose to receive it. Now, here's David. He has no clue. If they went north, south, east, or west, how long they've been gone, uh, he knows how big the force is. If even his people still alive, they know none of that. They're still sitting there looking at burning debris. And yet, he takes that word. Pursue. You will recover all. Can you see I'm talking about that's the third element in this. Don't fear. Believe God. And do that only. Believe what? What did he tell you? What did he tell you? And here he told him, she's going to be made whole. Yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Then like I said earlier, you can go ahead and schedule the uh, made whole party. Yeah. Is that right? <laughs> right? Yeah. You can go ahead and schedule the uh, recover all event. Right? Yeah. We can go ahead and order the balloons and the cake. <laughs> Is that right? <laughs> Based on what? He said. He said. He said. He said. So Jairus obviously did this. He obviously refused to fear. He obviously chose to believe only. And he chose to believe that she would be made whole even though they just told him she's dead. And when he came into the house, verse 51, he suffered no man to go in save Peter and James and John and the father and mother of the maiden. And they all wept, and they all bewailed her. He said, weep not, she's not dead, but sleeps. Why would he say that? Faith is the, the substance or ground or foundation of things expected. It is the evidence of things what? Come on, what? Not seen. We walk by faith, not by sight. What does that mean? Our focus is on the unseen realities. God is spirit. His word is spirit. Not on what our physical senses, what we see and know. The little girl was still alive. She still exists. We see in just a few moments when he called for her to come and arise, her spirit came back. Her spirit returned. So it wasn't true that she didn't exist anymore, that she's gone forever, that they've lost her forever. And even her body, it's going to be raised one day. And so in that sense, it's just temporary thing, sleep. So why would you talk like that? You need to be aware of the unseen, not just what you see and feel. We need to be more aware that he took our infirmities and bore our sicknesses and carried our pains and by his stripes were healed than of what's going on in this body right now. Is that true or not? 
We need to be more aware and more focused on my God shall supply all my needs according to his riches in Christ. We need to be more aware of that than the bills or something that's late or some need that's coming up. You can focus on this or this. You can't do both. If you try to do both, you're wavering, you're wondering, you're double-minded, you're unstable. Can you see why he said only? believe this. So when they get there, he chooses just Peter, James, and John, and the mom and the daddy of the little girl. And, you know, they are why he has a right to be there, the mom and the daddy. The daddy in particular is the one that went and got him. They, if they said right now, you know, no, Y'all, y'all leave. We got to be with our family now at this time. Jesus would have left. Hmm? That's why he could run the people out of the house. Because Jairus was backing him up. Come on, can you see that? And Mrs. Jairus too. If they could have said, hey, this is our house. You can't run these people off. Well, Jesus would have said, fine. I'm, I'll go. Now, if you think, well, no, that's not true. I don't believe that. Listen. The scripture says, behold, I stand at the door and knock. Doesn't say, I'm coming in. I don't care whether you want me to or not. Huh? No, that's just not true. That's not the way it is. If, somebody say if, if. If you will open the door and invite the Lord in, then he said, I'll come in and and sup and we'll, we'll commune and fellowship. But if you won't open the door, he's not going to force his way in. That's why he had a right. But the thing about putting the people out, it said when he saw them all crying and wailing and and playing the sad music and minstrels, I mean, there's a whole big commotion thing going on here at this house, and it's all grief. He put them out. Somebody say he put them all out. He, He put them all out. Are there times we need to do that in our own life, not just with people, but with every voice that's telling us unbelief and grief and pain? You need to turn off that channel. You need to shut off that thing. You need to get off of that um, communication thing that you're doing uh, on the social media uh, because all of these comments that are popping up, what are they saying? Is it faith? Then you don't need to hear it. Come on, can you see that you can't afford all of this stuff coming into you? Come on, say it out loud. He put them all out. He put put them all out. And this idea of just trying to tell everybody that you can about it and trying to get everybody to pray and believe with you is not uh, the leading of the Lord. See, it's you hoping maybe somebody will get it. (laughs) <laughs> and even so many times it's you not being confident in your own faith and your own prayer and even the people you know. So let's tell everybody we can. And it's kind of like throwing a bunch of stuff up against the wall and hoping some of it will stick. You know, we'll tell, you know, 100,000 people and we get them all praying and get them all, you know, and, and, and maybe some of them will get it done. No. No, no. What you will find is that the majority are wrong on spiritual things again and again. When the 12 spies went, how many were right? Two. How many were wrong? The majority. The 10. When they told that to all the people, how many got it wrong? The whole bunch. When they told it to everybody, did it get better? Hmm? No, no. What did, how did Jesus operate? You, you, and you. <laughs> Is that right? Mama, daddy, come to your house. Come on. Huh? Was that enough to get the job done? Yes. Yes. Don't look for quantity. Look for quality. Right? And when you note people are just hanging around to see what's going to happen, and that's not the ones you need around right now. Especially when it's critical, 
when it's life and death, you don't need sensation seekers, you don't need critics, you don't need analytics, you need, and you don't have to have a bunch of them, somebody that you know is really with you and really with God and is really believing the right thing about this right now, you don't have to have a bunch of people. Peter, James, John, Mom and Daddy, come on. So they went in there. He put them all out. How many think that's symbolic of putting a lot of stuff out? <laughs> right? Uh, we need to say it again. He put them all out. He put them all out. Hmm? Uh, you need to keep saying it because we live in the information age. We live, and there, the, the scripture said there are many voices in the world and, and all of them saying something. None of them is without signification. But most of them are saying the wrong thing. Most of them. Most of them. You don't need to hear. It's not going to help you. It's going to hurt you. It's going to distract you. It's going to confuse you if you listen to it. Don't be afraid. Believe only. Believe what? She shall be made whole. All right. This is all we're doing Huh? From now until we're on the other side of this. This is all. I don't need to hear that. I don't need to hear you. I don't need. Everybody out. Everybody. <laughs> come on, help me out. Everybody. Everybody. Out. everybody yeah, but we just got here. I don't care. Everybody. <laughs> out. What am I going to do with this casserole? Take it out. Everybody. <laughs> everybody. Out. Come on, say it again. Everybody. <laughs> everybody out. Everybody, all of this stuff has to go. Why? Believe only. Believe what? This, she shall be made whole. So now we finally got, the music is quit, <laughs> and the people are gone. Thank God. <laughs> it gets quiet again, and we're standing in the room. Not a sound on the bed, motionless. She looks dead. She is dead. And yet, she's not. She just left her body. Jesus is standing there. Mom and Daddy are standing there. Would you be tempted to break into tears and convulse? And, but you got a command. Don't fear. Is that right? Don't fear. What are we doing? We're only believing. Only believing what? She shall be made whole. And Jesus took her by the hand. He had to pick it up. Took her by the hand. Called. King James says made. We'd say little girl probably. Little girl. Get up. <laughs> and she got up. Whew. Immediately. She raised up off the bed, put her, put her feet off the bed, got up, read the other accounts, and started walking. Somebody say, wow. <laughs> this is what happens when you put all the junk out. Come on, are you with me or not? When you refuse to fear, hmm? when you have a singular focus of only faith and believing exactly what he told you and fully expect, be like being like Abraham, fully persuaded that what he said, he's able to do it and fully expecting it to come to pass. Hallelujah. Look how quick, look how quick we go from everybody getting ready for a funeral to you know, before long she's going to be picking out what she's wearing to school tomorrow. Huh? She gets up. Twelve-year-old girl. Gets up. Mama, daddy. Oh, man. Oh, Lord. Her parents were astonished. You put it all together, the other translations and the words, they were beside themselves. They, they were overflowing, astonished and happy beyond words. Do you think there was any hugging going on? Oh, there was, there was hugging, there was kissing, there was shouting, 
There was praising. Look in verse 55 though. Her spirit came again and she arose straightway. Uh, Isn't there so much revelation right here? This tells you what death is. Death is not the end. Death is departure. Your spirit leaves your body. You are your spirit. That's who you are. That's what you are. It's just in the physical vessel of this body. This body is your house, the house your spirit lives in. It's called a tabernacle in other places in the scripture. But her spirit came back from where it was and where it had gone, came back right into her body, opens her eyes, her heart starts beating again, lungs starts working again, blood starts flowing again, nerve energy, she gets up off the bed, starts walking around, Mama, Daddy, hugging, kissing, shouting. And, and notice this. Jesus says, uh, uh, get her something to eat. Really? <laughs> important. How many think it's important or it wouldn't be here? It says, in, in Luke says, he commanded to give her meat. Actually, that's the word for food. We'd say food. In, in King James, if it's talking about what we call meat, it says flesh. But commanded to give her some food to eat. Why? Why would it say that? Why would it do that? Uh, actually, this word is also translated, could be translated, prescribe. He prescribed, he gave her a prescription. <laughs> this is interesting, isn't it? Uh, What's the prescription? Uh, Eat something right away. Now. Why? Um, The scripture tells us that God fed his people supernaturally with um, manna. You remember that in in the Old Testament? But it didn't last forever. In Exodus 16.35, it said the children of Israel ate manna 40 years until... They came to a land inhabited to the borders of Canaan. Joshua 5.12 says the manna ceased on the morrow after they had eaten the old corn of the land. The miracle of manna only lasted while they needed the miracle. And then they started eating off the crops of the land like you normally do. Because God set those things in motion too. He set seed time and harvest and and seasons and all that. He didn't intend that we require a continuous spectacular miracle. Well, her body's been dead for I don't know uh, how long it was, even if it was just an hour or so. Uh, Anyway, everything has quit working. Hmm? This done, stopped, ceased, and Uh, It needs to be kicked back into gear again. Can you see that? She needs to eat. She needs to drink. Everything needs to be functioning normally like it's supposed to. And obviously by the Spirit of God, after such an amazing, spectacular miracle, the Lord brings up the natural thing. Can you see? Is all this important? And says, uh, get her something to eat. Right, Come on now, right away. Uh, I'm I'm giving you a prescription (laughs) from Dr. Jesus. And she did. So why talk about that? Because the body's natural and the functions are natural and it's not just spiritual or natural. They work together. And sometimes you'll be surprised about what the Lord will tell you to do can be just the simplest, most natural thing, and you're trying to believe for some spectacular miracle, sometimes you need one of them too. But the the only way to get things right is to be led by the Spirit every day, every night. Well, I don't know what to do. See step one. (laughs) Is that right? What was step one with you? Come on, class, you've been here for days. What? He worshiped him. Remember that? He worshipped him, and as he worshipped him, he found it in his heart what to pray 
and what to say, and Jesus was on the case. Hallelujah. He was right there with him every step of the way. And when they got almost there, the enemy tried to mess everything up, right? Sent him an evil report. A bunch of fear tried to jump on him, and the Lord gave him the word he needed. Is that right? Don't be afraid. Only believe. This is what you believe. She shall be made whole. And he got him all the way there. Even after she's alive again, he tells him the next thing. Let's get her some food. Right? Let's get some food in her, get some water in her, get everything working again. Praise God. And we have the complete manifestation, the complete miracle. Is there anything to be learned from the healing of Jairus' daughter? Oh, man. And we, had only, we only scratched the surface these two weeks. Said out loud, I live by faith. I walk by faith. I overcome the world by faith. I'm strong. In faith, giving glory to God. Hallelujah. Implement these things in your life, child of God, every day. Rely on the Spirit. Rely on His Word. When you don't know what to do, you know who to look to. You know who to trust. And we're going to see more and more miracles in our lives, in our generation too. Can you say amen? Hallelujah. We'll see you next time here in Faith School. Really enjoyed being with you all this week again, talking about the healing of Jairus' daughter. These accounts are so wonderful. They're so rich. I want to say a word of thanks to all of our partners. We have so many partners. Many of you are partners that support the ministry with faith and with prayer and with finances. And to let you know, we are believing with you for all of your needs to be met. The parallels between receiving healing and receiving provision are, are the same. They are the very same principles. And just like we saw the Lord gave Jairus a specific word that helped him, he gives specific words. He told his disciples, cast your nets on that side of the boat. Go over here, there will be a donkey. Uh, you'll use him. Let me pray with you right now for that specific thing. Father, reveal to our partners the very action to take right now that will open up the vein and flow of provision that you have for them. Reveal it to them. Confirm it to them. We ask it right now in Jesus' name. Sit out loud. He orders my steps. He directs my paths. He guides me and teaches me in the way I should go. He leads me in the way to prosper. Hallelujah, in Jesus' name. We bless you in the name of the Lord Jesus. Thank you for being hooked with us. We'll see you next time here in Faith School. Thank you for joining us at Faith School. Class is dismissed for today, but you can watch this and other episodes of Faith School free of charge at faithschool.org. For more information, visit our website or call us at 941-702-7390. 